Alright guys, so here we are, okay, and this is again the last little topic that we're going to talk about, okay, in our uh, unit here on similarity, and it's, the title of this is Partitioning a Line Segment, okay, into a, a Given Ratio. So what we're going to do now is take a segment all right, segments have like lengths to them, right? Because they have a starting point and a stopping point. And we're going to um, break it up so that one piece is in a particular ratio that will be given with another piece of that same segment. So that together they kind of like make a fraction almost, okay? So um, the question that we want to be able to answer is how do you find a point on a directed line segment that partitions the given segment in a given ratio, all right? So we're gonna do it uh, on a number line here first, kind of get an idea of what exactly is going on, okay? So um, it takes just one number to specify an exact location on a number line, right? So if like we've got a number line here and I'm like, you know, can you please find, you know, um, the coordinate of 30? And you're like, all right, well, I just need the one number to tell you that, you know, we're going to be right here at point 30, okay? Uh, the mile markers on a, on a straight stretch of highway kind of turn that part of the highway into a one-dimensional coordinate system. I don't know if you guys ever have noticed, but when you're riding on the, driving on the highway, like on Interna Interstate 70 or something like that, there are mile markers, small little green signs on the side of the road that tell you like uh, the number of miles that you're on. And so that's helpful because if you ever break down and you want to like call like someone to come pick you up, you can tell them you know what mile marker you're near so that way they can kind of easily find you on the highway. Because if you just tell them, I'm on 70, <laughs> 70 is a very long road, so it's like where on 70. So it's helpful to see that mile marker, okay? Also, if you like listen to the traffic sh on the news, you'll hear like, oh, there's an accident by mile marker, you know, 62 or something like that, and then you'll know, or by exit 66. So they tell you about the exit sometimes too, but anyway. Um, so that's like, it tra creates the highway, turns the highway into a coordinate system almost. So on a straight highway, so this is just kind of our situation here. On a straight highway, the exit for Arthur Avenue is at mile marker 14. Okay, the exit for Collingwood Road, another made up road here, is at mile marker 44. The State Highway Administration plans to put an exit for Briar Street at a point that is two thirds of the distance from Arthur Avenue to Collingwood Road. And we're gonna follow some steps here to determine where that new exit will be placed. All right, so the first thing we're asked to do here is to mark Arthur Avenue point A and Collingwood Road point C on the number line here. Okay, so let's see here. So, uh, Addy, what 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 they say the shh, what they say the, the what was the coordinate of Arthur Avenue or what mile marker is it at? Uh, that's Collingwood Road, I think, is 44. So Arthur Avenue, sorry. Yeah, yeah, Arthur Avenue is 14. So we're gonna go. Here's 10. So we'll count then 11, 12, 13, 14. There's where point A. Arthur Avenue is. So that's the, where the exit for Arthur Avenue is. Okay. So, and then Collingwood Road is at 44. So one, so there's 40, 41, 42, 43, 44. There's C, Collingwood Road. Okay. So we're going to mark our point A, okay, at coordinate 14. And our coordinate C there at 44. Okay, and so those were like the two exits are on the road, and we want to find, eventually we want to find the point for Briar Street, which is two-thirds of this distance. Okay, so letter B first asks us, okay, what is the distance from Arthur Avenue to Collingwood Road? So what is that distance? Let's go to Eric. What is the distance between these two points? From 14 to 44, what's that distance? Sorry? Or what could we do to find the distance? You don't have to, like, you know, give me the actual number. What, what could we do to find the distance? Subtract. Yeah, subtract. Yeah, yeah. 44 minus 14, which is 30. So 30 miles. Okay, so the distance from here to here, and if you counted it, too, you could sit there and count, you know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, it would be 30. It would be 30 miles. Okay? Shh. Now, how far <laughs> what? 
I don't know. It's just I feel like every time I start talking, I hear other people. Look, guys, if you can't handle rulers, you know, I can have you go back to elementary school and they can teach you how to use rulers appropriately and not like weapons, all right, or toys. It's right across the street. I know. It's like right there. Or we could have them come over and sh teach you how to do it because that might be what we need. Okay. But seriously, guys, let's 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 you know, pull it together here. Um, so. Next question, how far will the Briar Street exit be from Arthur Avenue? So now, the next piece of information we know, right, the State Highway Administration plans to put an exit for Briar Street at a point that is two-thirds of the distance from Arthur Avenue to Collingwood Road. So if we know the total distance is 30, and I want to put, we want to put Briar Street two-thirds of that distance, Okay, how do we find two-thirds of 30, Josh? What should we do to find two-thirds of 30? What mathematical operation? Add, subtract, multiply, or divide if we want to find two-thirds of 30? So close. It's multiply. Multiply, yeah. So two-thirds times 30, okay, because again, Briarwood, Briar Street's going to be two-thirds of the distance, which is 20, okay? So... From Arthur Avenue, okay, the br exit for Briar Street should be 20 miles. Question? Yeah, 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 just type the calculator, yep. Mm -hmm. You can also do it, I mean, Josh, you can actually do this pretty easily uh, if you know how to do your fraction arithmetic. So when you do 2 thirds times 30, you can make 30 as a fraction of 30 over 1. And when you have fractions, you can simplify, right? The 3 and the 30 simplify. That becomes a 10. That becomes a 1. You follow me? And then 2 times 10 is 20 over 1, so it's just going to be 20. So that's actually not too hard to do by, by hand. Yeah. Um, oh, like use 0.666, you mean? Um, yes, that's fine. Then. Yes, that's fine. That's fine. Yes, that's fine. Yes, that's fine. yes. Eli? What did you divide by 2? That gives you 15, though. So we want to. So we're not going half. So dividing 30 by two, that means we're going half the distance. But we don't want to go half the distance. The exit for Briar Street is at a point that is two thirds of the distance. So that's why we want to multiply by two thirds there, not divide up, not divide by two. You see the see that there, okay? So Briar Street is 20 miles from Arthur Avenue. So What's the mile marker number for the Briar Street exit going to be? So, Jordan, what do you want to say? Yeah, 34, 14, 34, exactly right. Arthur Avenue is already <coughs> on coordinate 14. We need to go 20 more miles in from that to find the Briar Street exit, though. And so 14 plus 24 is mile marker 34. Okay? So 34 is your answer there. Okay, and we're going to then plot and label the Briar Street exit, point B, on the number line. So here's 30, 31, 32, 33, 34. So there's point B. Okay, now if you just kind of eyeball that there, does B look like it's two-thirds of the distance from A to C? Yeah, it does, right? That's one-third right there. And if you, if you double this, eh, it looks like it would be about that space right there. So yes, B is two-thirds of the distance there from <coughs> um, from from A to C. Question. So I understand. This is a pr about the shortest that we can do it. Yeah. Unfortunately, this this is this is a little involved. This is a little involved. Okay. So, um, but that's the answer there. Questions on that? All right. Let's turn the page here. Then, if there are no questions. Turn the page. Okay, so now, <clears throat> additional point to the problem here. The Highway Administration also plans to put an exit for Dakota Lane at a point that divides the highway from Arthur Avenue to Collingwood Road in a ratio of 2 to 3. Okay, so this is slightly different. Before, we were told that we wanted to put Briar Street at a point that is two-thirds of the distance from Arthur Avenue. So we just had to find the distance and multiply by two-thirds. But here... We want to point, put point. Um, we want to put the Dakota Lane so that we divide the total road in a ratio of two parts to three parts. 
So if we want to divide it into two parts to three parts, how many total parts are we talking about? Two, two parts on one side, three parts on the other side, not six parts, five, yeah, five parts, okay? And so we're going to go two of those parts in to find Dakota Lane. So we'll go in two parts, which will leave three parts on the other side. So our fraction we're looking for is actually two-fifths. We want to go two-fifths the distance. So that, because the idea is, again, we have two parts on one side, three parts on the other side, so that's a total of five, and we want to go in two parts to find that point. So we want to go two-fifths of the distance there. Okay, so it'll be two-fifths times the full distance there of 30. Remember, again, the full distance between uh, Arthur Avenue and Collingwood Road was a distance of 30. Okay, so two-fifths of 30, that's going to be 12. Okay, so Dakota Lane will be 12, you, 12 miles in from, bless you, yeah, 12 miles in from Arthur Avenue. Okay, so we'll go back here to Arthur Avenue. And Arthur Avenue is at 14, so we'll add 12 to that. So that's going to be 26. So here's 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. So there's 26 right there, and that is D. Okay. So again, this is a bit different. Here are two parts, and then here are three parts. It's a different kind of fraction. Okay. You have two parts and three parts, so that's, there's the ratio. So the distance from here to here, and you, if you make it a ratio with this, it'll be two to three. So this distance to this distance is two to three. That's a different kind of ratio there. Okay, not a fraction, but a ratio. Okay. It's a little bit weird. We'll try some more problems. That's not the only one we're going to do there, but there's this like, little application of it. Okay. Questions on any of that? All right. Let's move on here then. So... Here's, um, here's a way, here's, so here's how we're going to be using that, another way we're going to see that here, okay? So let's look down here at the bottom of page 642 at this problem, all right? And we're going to try and do something similar here in the coordinate plane, okay? So you've got here, we want to find the coordinates of the point P. In this situation, we want to find the coordinates of the point P that divides the directed line segment so the line segment right here, from A to B in the given ratio. Okay, so here you've got A and B, the points are given. We draw the segment between them, and then we want to find the point P so that it breaks A to B up into three parts on one side and one part on the other side. So three parts to one part. Okay, so again, if we want to break it up into the ratio of three parts to one part, how many total parts are we talking about? Four, right? And so our fraction's denominator, our fraction of the entire thing is going to be four. And then what will our numerator be here? Well, we want to go three-fourths of the way in, right? Three to one. We'll have three on one side, one on the other side. So we'll put the three in right there like that. So three-fourths is our, is our fraction, okay? But now if I go down here and I look, I have this diagonal line. I have no idea how long this diagonal line is, Okay? But here are some options you have, okay? Option one, you'll notice here that they counted the run and they counted the rise, right? If you look here, they have the run as being 16. So this full length here is 16. And the full length, uh, the full length here for the run, or for the rise, I should say, sorry, is 12, okay? But we want to go 3 fourths of that. So if I do 16 times 3 fourths, Okay, I'll do that in my calculator here. 16 times 3 fourths. I get 12. Okay, so that's 12. And if I do 12 times 3 fourths, okay, again, because we want to break our line segment up into a fraction of 3 parts to 1 part, so that's 4 total parts, 3 over 4. So 3 fourths of each, the rise and the run there. So 12 times 3 fourths is 9. Okay, see those two right there? So that means here, instead of going the full run of 16, I only need to go the run of 12. And instead of going the full rise of 9, I only need to go, uh, sorry, instead of going the full rise of 12, I'm just going to go rise of 9. So starting at A, 
Okay, once you calculate the fraction of the full run and the fraction of the full rise, you can just count. We're going to go 12 over. Now, each box here, which I don't like how they did this, but each box is counting by twos. If you see here, negative two, negative four, negative six, negative eight. So every box I go is going to be twos. So it'll be two, four, six, eight, ten. There's 12. So I've gone the 12, which is the fraction I want. I'm going to go up then nine. So I'll go up. You know, half a box is one, two, four. Oh, sorry, sorry. One plus two is three, five, seven, nine. And there's the point. Right there. So I went over 12, up 9, and there's my point. That's the point that divides this segment into a three parts to one part ratio right there. Okay, so there's the three parts. And there's the one part. Okay? So questions on that. <coughs> so again, what did we, let, me, let me go back and summarize, and then Alex, you can see if you have questions from there, okay? So we had to plot, the two points were plotted for us. We wanted to break this segment up into a ratio so that it was three parts to one part. So three parts to one part means four total parts. We want to go in three of those parts, three out of the total four, to find that point. Okay? So... Because we can't find that full distance there of that line, it's diagonal, right? We can't just like count it. So we'll use instead the run and the rise to go from here to here. So instead of going the full run of 16, we did 3 fourths of the 16, 12. Instead of going the full rise of 12, we did 3 fourths of the 12, 9. And just count from A over 12, up 9. And there's the point on our line segment that divides it into three parts to one part. Yeah, it's just, this is just a random, like, this just, this, hey, just try, just do three to one. I can give you any ratio. <coughs> nope, I can give you any ratio, and you can, you can just do it that way, too. Now, let me show you an alternative way that may be, may be more comfortable. So for those of you guys, maybe that was too much. Let me show you maybe an easier way here that you might like. Okay, and that's why I gave you the rulers. So if you guys want to grab your rulers here real quick, I'll show you an alternative method. Okay, so grab your rulers, rulers in hand here. Let me show you an alternative to doing this. Okay, and I think some of you guys are going to prefer this to what we just were doing there. Ugh, and this thing is not going to measure easily regardless of how I put it, but... All right, if you take your ruler and measure, using centimeters, measure the full length of AB. Okay? Now, when I measure AB... I don't know about you, I get about 4.2. You all agree with me there, 4.2? Okay, so if I get the full length is 4.2, but I don't want to go the full length, what fraction of the full length do I want? We want to go 3 fourths, right? So just do 4.2, the full length, times 3 fourths. Okay, and it might not work out exactly, but 4.2 times 3 fourths. Actually, I should put that in parentheses. And I get 3.15. So, bless you. If I measure from A 3.15 centimeters, <coughs> look where we get. There's 3.1, there's 0.2 right between them, 3.15. And look at where the point is. That's our point. So that's, you can check your work, or you can do it that way too if you want. Okay? So all we had to do there, measure the full length, and then we did the fraction that we wanted times that full length, and that, then we just measure in from there, and we get the, we pick kind of the nearest point there, and that's it, okay? So that works too. All right, let's try another one to make sure we got this okay. <coughs> let's try another one. So we'll scoot over here, go to example B. Okay, so in example B, we want to plot the point negative 4, 4 for A, so negative 4, 4. There's A. Okay, B is 2, 1. Okay, whoops. Off screen there. Come on, there we go. All right, so connect the dots. A to B. Okay, there's A, B. Now, we want to divide A, B so that it's one part to two parts. So 
So one part to two parts, that means how many total parts are we talking about? Three total parts, and we want to make, we want to go in one third then. So one third is our fraction we want. Again, it's the one plus the two, makes the denominator, and we want to go in one third of those. So it'll be one third on one side, and then two thirds on the other side. Now some of you guys might be able to look at this and can already maybe tell where one third of the way in from A to B is. Can anyone eyeball it and maybe anyone want to take a guess? One third of the way in from A to B? So not the full distance, but one third of the distance. Can anyone eyeball it from there? So Eric, what do you want to say? Negative two, three. Alex, what were you going to say? So he, er, Eric's saying this point right here. Negative two, two right here? No, no, just like bottom. Oh, right here? Yeah. Okay, so that's, so that's, that's, I think that's, that's actually a ratio of two to three, or sorry, two to one instead of one to two. Yeah. Um, that, Gabe, were you going to say, or Debbie, were you going to say something? I saw a hand over here, too. Negative two, three as well? Yeah. So let's just check and make sure, but I think you're actually exactly right there uh, for those of you that said uh, the negative two, three. Let's check it. <coughs> so again, I'll, do, I'll show you both ways here, and you can kind of decide which way you want. Let's count the rise. So from A to B, the rise is down a total of 3, so negative 3. And the run from A to B is, and again, they were counted by 1s now, so that's kind of nice. The run from A to B is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, so down 3, right 6. But of course, we want to go the full, we don't want to go the full rise. We want to go one-third of that. So one-third times negative 3 is negative 1. And we don't want to go the full run, we want to go one third of that to create this, ra this parts, one part to two parts. So we want to go the full thing, so we'll do one third of six, which is two. Okay, so if I instead go down one from A and then write two, there's the point. Okay, that uh, Eric and Debbie were talking about. That's the point. So they were right. They were right. Okay, and Melissa? Sure. Alternatively here, if we measure the distance from A to B, and again, this is where you have to be a little, I got about 2.123, I got about 2.3 there for the full distance. If I just measure the full distance and then multiply that by one third, two point three times one third? Oh, 2.85 for the distance? Maybe, oh, you know what? Goodness gracious, you're right. I measured like way off there. It is 2.8. I apologize. Thank you. I know, right? Come on, Mr. Whitmire, indeed. All right, point nine three three three. So we'll measure from A about point 0.9 and a little bit more, and sure enough, there's point 0.9 and a little bit more takes us exactly to the point that we want there. Okay, so it works. It works. Okay, questions on any of that? I got two more problems we're going to look at here real quick. So we're all good on that? All right, let's move on here then. Now, we also want to be able to do this when we're not in the coordinate plane. So if you turn the page, please, to 644. Turn the page, page please, to 644. Okay, we want to be able to do this without the coordinate plane too. Okay, so obviously since we're not in the coordinate plane, we can't use the rise and the run. We have to just use the, the ruler method that we used, okay? So in fact, I'm going to see if I can. This works now, okay? So if you just use, uh, on page 644, we'll just use our ruler here. So again, let's measure the full length from A to B. And, ooh, it's kind of a decimal there. I'll say it's something like 3.7 or 3.8, okay? Maybe if you want to, you could even say 3. 7, 5, because it looks like it's exactly right between there. So we'll say the full distance is 3.75 centimeters. Okay. But we want to break this up into a ratio so we have two parts on one side and one part on the other side. So there's going to be a point in here somewhere that's two, points on, two parts on one side and one part on the other side. So again, if we have two parts on one side, one part on the other side, how many total parts? 
3. That's our denominator. And then what's we want in our numerator there? Yeah, it's 2. We want 2 to 1, so it's going to have 2 parts on one side, so 2 thirds, and then 1 third on the other side. So we're going to do 2 thirds of 3.75. Okay. So 2.75 times 2 thirds is about 1.83333 repeating. And so we'll just measure, okay? We'll measure in from A 1.83 approximately, of course, because we don't have a 0.83, but so there's 1, there's 1 1.5, 1 1.6, 1 1.7, 1 1.8. I'll just go a little bit more and say something like right there. Okay? Two parts to one part. Okay. Goodness, that doesn't look... Oh my gosh, you know what, look what I did in my calculator. I did 2.75 times 2 thirds. I was looking at that, I was like, that does not look the right distance. I know, right? Go home, Mr. Wid. You're drunk. All right, so here we go. 2.5, there it is. 2.5, 2.5, my mistake, 2.5, there it is right there. Yeah, that point didn't make sense, right? That's not one, two parts to one part over here. That's where the point is. So sorry about that, folks. Okay. So again, there's two parts here, and there's one part right here. Okay, you can kind of see if you doubled this little length, you'd have two of those in there. Okay. All right, we'll do one more here. One more. We don't mind. All right, let's try just one more. And we'll just try, ah, here's another one. The last one here has us putting this in a ratio of one to three. Okay, one to three. So let's see. So, so a uh, piper. All right, one to three parts. That means how many total parts are we dealing with here? Four parts. So that's our denominator. And then what's going to be our numerator? There's one. Yeah, one fourth. We want one fourth here, and then the three fourths will be over here. Okay, so we'll measure the full distance. Well, that's kind of nice. It's just about five. How about that? That's convenient. So we'll do one-fourth times the five-centimeter length. I'm going to put my calculator up on the screen here so everyone can see and correct me if I do it wrong. I did it right there. 1.25. Okay. All right, so we'll measure in 1.25 then. So there's 1, 1.1, 1.2, and 1.25. We'll be like halfway between. And there's our point. Okay. So there again, there's the one part. And then there's the three parts. Okay. So one part and then three of these little one parts fill up the rest there for a total of four parts. See, so we put it in the correct ratio. All right. The, the test will have questions like this on it, yes. The entire test will not be this, though. We've only done one day on this. We've done every, you know, all the other days on the ratios and proportions and stuff. But there will be questions like this. On it. Review. No. There's no park in geometry. Unless, unless... There's like a, an exception for a few people, I think, in the class will have to pick the park, but uh, for geometry. But no, there's no geometry park. Woohoo! Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't have to worry about that.